Particle Effects lets you create unique particle effects quickly and easily inside Blender, all powered by Geometry Nodes. In this video, I'll show you how to install particle effects and walk you through the basics so you can start building your own effects right away. After purchasing particle effects, you will receive a zip file containing all the necessary files. Extract it to anywhere you like. Then open up Blender. Go to Edit, Preferences, File Paths and under the Assets Libraries section, click the plus button to add a new library. Navigate to the folder you just extracted. Select it and add it as a new assets library. Make sure to save your preferences, especially if you don't have autosave enabled. Then split your window by dragging from a corner and change one of the panels to assets browser. From the drop down menu, select the particle effects library we just added. Here you will find a collection of ready to use assets from modifiers and presets to templates and materials. You can simply drag and drop them into your scene to start building your particle simulations instantly. Particle effects are built on a layered modifier workflow. There are three main modifier types you will work with. Emitters, Simulators and Renderers. Emitters define the shape or source of your particles. This could be anything from a basic primitive to a custom mesh. You can even use images or curves as emitters. Once your emitter is ready, choose a simulator to control how the particles move. Each simulator has its own behavior and properties, helping you achieve a wide range of effects easily. Finally, use a renderer to define how your particles are displayed. You can render them as meshes, curves or even volumes. In addition to those main types, there are two special modifiers. The mass modifier helps you hide or isolate parts of your emitter. The trails modifier adds a copy of your particle at every frame, creating a trailing motion. When stacking modifiers, pay close attention to the numbers in their names. Modifier 0 should always be at the top of the stack, followed by the rest in numerical order. If you see an X next to a number, that means you can use multiple copies of that modifier stacked together. Let's create a particle simulation from scratch to see how everything works in particle effects. Start by adding a simple mesh plane to the scene. Let's go to emitter and select this basic emitter. You will be using this for the most of the times. Just drag and drop it onto the plane. Immediately you will see the plane turn into a cloud of points. If you go to the modifiers tab, you will find the emitter modifier, where you can tweak all its settings. Here you can adjust the radius of the points and also add some randomness to it. You can also add some offset to your emitter from here. By default, it's set to shape emitter type. Under the shape emitter settings, you can control the number of points, the primitive shape, and the scale of that emitter shape. Apart from this sphere emitter, you can have ring and plane shapes as well. You can adjust the settings to easily turn it into a disc or a box. Let's switch ours back to a hemisphere for now. In the mesh emitter type, you can use your own custom mesh as an emitter, which we will discuss later in this video. Now let's make these points move. Go to the simulators category and drag in a spawn burst simulator. Drop it onto the emitter points. And if you hit play, you'll see the particles shoot upward. The simulator has a few key settings. Start and end frame controls when the burst happens. By default, it bursts at frame 1. You can enable continuous burst to keep emitting particles over time. Let's add a bit of simulation offset to better view the other options. Under add velocity, you can control the basic direction and speed of the particles. Linear pushes them in a single direction. From point makes them emit outwards from the origin. As mentioned in this tooltip, 
normal velocity will only work with custom meshes where it forces the points to move in the direction of the mesh normal. Here you can define the lifetime of the particles in frames. Next you can add curl noise to introduce organic motion. You can adjust its strength, panning speed and threshold which defines the minimum velocity a point needs to receive noise. You can even add a spiral motion to create swirling effects. Let's increase the point count so the spiral is more visible. You can set the spiral origin to either the simulation origin or a custom mesh. I'll skip to drag. As you probably guess, drag will add resistance to your particles movement, slowing them down over time. Gravity will add force of gravity to particles motion. I reduce it to a lower value for this demonstration. Here you will also see some warnings and information regarding the simulator. If you are facing any issues, make sure to read this. They often give helpful info or tell you what might be wrong. Let's add collision to our simulation. First I'll add a plane to act as a collider and put it in a new collection. Then select it from here. Now when you play the simulation, you'll see the particles bouncing off the plane. This E value controls how much energy particles retain after a collision. Lower values make them lose energy and bounce less. Collision delay adds a short delay before collision detection starts. Enable kill particles to remove particles on impact. Then you have settings to control the bounciness and the friction. You can also enable self collision for these particles. We got our particle simulation. Let's see how we can display them in the render. There are four main renderers in particle effects. Point cloud renderer is perfect for rendering particles as simple globing spheres in cycles. And it is much faster than instancing meshes. I'll drag and drop it to the particles. Let's go to the render view. Here you can control how the particle scale changes over time. You can do an additional size increase of the particles from here. Also change the particles color and emissive strength. You can have random colors as well. I'll change my view transform to filmic in the render settings. It'll show the colors better in glowing materials. You can change how the particles receive their colors from here. By default all the materials have glowing shaders to them. And here I have added three material slots for you to quickly test out materials. Since we are using point cloud renderer you have to switch to cycles. You can see the points are rendered as perfect spheres. Let's go back to material view to test the trails modifier. I drag and drop it into the particles. Make sure to stack the modifiers according to their numerical order. Trails should be above the renderer. Now when I play we have these trailing particles. You can change the trail lifetime and even add linear or curl motion to them. I'll replace point cloud renderer with a mesh renderer. This one allows you to render points as any shape you desire. By default you can render them as icospheres. If not you can pick any shape from here and adjust the settings. Again you have the option to change their scale over time. To use custom particles I add a few to the scene. Group them into a new collection and enable custom particles in the modifier. You can assign a single custom shape from here. I'll select the torus. Now all the points turns into a torus shape and it ignores the current material and uses the torus material. So if I add a material to the torus, you can see it in the simulation. Let's use the entire collection. 
you can see it randomly picks a mesh from the collection for each particle. You can rotate this as well. A random fixed rotation or make them align to their velocity direction. You can also rotate them over time. Oh, my favorite face camera. To show that, let me turn off the custom particles and set the shape to plane. Then I add a camera and place it like this. Now when I use the face camera option, all the planes are facing towards the camera. If I move the camera, you can see planes orient themselves to always face the camera. This is great if you want to create a sprite sheet animation from the particles. To see a glowing effect in the viewport, make sure to add glare node in the compositor and enable the viewport compositor. Next, let's try the Ribbon Renderer, which converts particles and their trails into smooth tubes or stripes. Each trail becomes a curve based mesh. You can see this weird behavior towards the end. That's because when you use the Ribbon Renderer, make sure to have a fixed lifetime for all the particles. I set it to 50. Here you can trim the curves. In the ribbon mesh, you can adjust the settings regarding the tube shape. You can also change these into planes. Usually a resolution of 3 is fine for planes but if you see any weird artifacts around these sharp bends, increase the number to something like 5 or 7. Here you have the options to change the tessellation of the curve or introduce dynamic resolution to them. Just like before, you can make these plane curves face the camera at all times. And finally, you have a volume renderer which converts the particles into volume. It has a few volume types that you can switch between to find the perfect one to your requirement. My favorite is Volume Cube. By default, it has this glowing volume material. Here in the material section in the assets library, you have access to a bunch of materials to use with these renderers. You don't always need to open the assets browser to add particle FX modifiers. Once installed, go to the modifiers tab Click Add Modifier, Particle Effects and choose any modifier directly from there. Let's use a custom mesh as an emitter. I add a Susan, we smooth it out and place it like this. You can add the Particle Effects modifiers directly into this but I like to do it separately. I select my previous plane and add an emitter modifier. Here I set this to mesh emitter type and select our Susan. You can see points are distributed across the surface of the mesh. You can control the amount of the particles from here. This will also extract the UV data from the mesh into the points. All you have to do is enter the UV map name correctly. Just copy the UV map name from here and paste it here. If you enable random seed, it will change the distribution every frame. You also have a few distribution types. Surface mask allows you to mask the area of the mesh with a vertex group. So I select the Susan and paint some weight data. And I change the vertex group name to something like mask. Then click this icon to change this to an attribute input and paste or type that name. Now the points are distributed only in that area. You can also distribute points inside the volume of the mesh. I set this back and let's add a simulator. I will add a spawn rate modifier. This will keep spawning particles until the end frame 
at this rate. Just like before, you have the velocity settings. This time, you can use the normal velocity. I will turn down the velocity scale and point count to show the effect clearly. Like that. The rest of the settings are similar to the previous simulator. Let's look at this miscellaneous panel. You can create trail data for the ribbon renderer without using the trails modifier from here. By default, it creates this effect when you add a ribbon renderer. But if you enable trail data, you can see the correct trails effect. That covers the basics of building simulations from scratch. But you don't have to start from zero every time. Templates give you a ready-made starting point. Just drag and drop a template, tweak the parameters and you are ready to go. All the modifiers are pre-arranged and optimized. I'll be adding more templates in future updates as well. You can even create sprite sheet animations using templates. Add a camera and the system automatically orients particles towards it. Just replace that sprite sheet texture in the material with your own for different looks. Presets on the other hand are more like finished effects, ready to use in your projects with minimal changes. You can make a quick logo animation like this. In here you can see how the image emitter and the mass sphere modifier is set up to create this logo animation. Here is an example of using surface particles modifier. Here are some dust particles using the minimal particles motion modifier, which is actually not using simulation nodes so you don't need to bake this one. And that's it, those are the core basics of creating and customizing effects with particle effects. In the next tutorials, we'll dive deeper into some of the more advanced features. Until then, have fun experimenting with particle effects. And don't forget to check out our other products too. Thanks for watching.